the bronchi the bronchi again further divides inside it further divides to from bronchioles initially they are primary bronchioles primary bronchioles divide to produce secondary bronchioles the secondary bronchioles divide to form tertiary bronchioles the tertiary bronchioles divide to produce terminal bronchioles the terminal bronchioles divide to produce respiratory bronchioles the respiratory bronchioles divide to form alveolar ducts each alveolar duct end up in a sac called as alveolar sac and each alveolar sac contains alveoli so that's the end now what is the difference between the we already discussed about trachea and bronchi now we are discussing about the bronchioles now bronchioles are different from bronchi basically that the c shaped rings which are present in bronchi are absent in bronchioles the c shaped rings because they are they are larger in diameter they require c shaped rings but when we have come to bronchioles if you see initial bronchioles the diameter of initial bronchioles is 1 mm in diameter they are so small that a c shaped ring uh, structural presence of c shaped rings is very difficult in that case so you don't find though initially uh, until certain extent of primary bronchioles you might find them but most of the bronchioles that c shaped rings are absent they are they are very minute in diameter when you come to terminal bronchioles it is half a millimeter the diameter gradually reduces and by the time we come to alveoli it is 0.1 millimeter it's 1/10th of a millimeter now another difference is we have got in trachea and bronchi we have got pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium but when we came to bronchioles the pseudo stratified is gone and in the initial bronchioles it is simple columnar ciliated it is simple columnar ciliated in the in the primary secondary bronchi at the beginning the pseudo stratified is gone it is present in trachea and bronchi it became simple columnar and there are also cilia but when you proceed downwards gradually when you come to the ending of the bronchioles gradually it becomes simple cuboidal it becomes simple cuboidal in the smaller bronchioles and by the time we came to alveoli if you see that alveolus you can see simple squamous the cells are flat the cells are absolutely flat so they have become flat cells so you can see from pseudo stratified ciliated seen in trachea and bronchi initial bronchioles it is simple columnar and later bronchioles it became cuboidal and by the time we came to alveoli it becomes squamous become flat trachea and bronchi cilia are present cilia are also present in initial bronchioles but when the when the size has come down to say simple cuboidal the cilia also gradually reduces the cilia also gradually reduces so here and there only you will find when you proceed down the bronchioles the cilia is reduced the mucus cells are reduced so you can see when you come to these areas there there is no cilia there is no goblet cells but when you proceed in the bronchioles you will feel something else you will see something else which is not seen in bronchi and those cells are called as club cells
they are called club cells also called clara cells also called bronchiole or exocrine cells in bronchioles the cilia are reduced gradually the mucus cells are reduced gradually but unlike in bronchi there is something else called as club cells or clara cells they are also called bronchiole or exocrine cells they are elevated dome like cells with microvilli and what is the function of these cells they cells the cells produce surfactant it is the substance is called surfactant a chemical which reduces surface tension remember the bronchioles are very thin so 1 mm half a mm or less than that so when two opposite layers are so are very close to each other there is always a tendency that both these membranes they come closer and attach with each other so preventing the air from passing passing through them so there is always such tendency but when a surfactant is produced this this will produce a surfactant a chemical which keeps both that membranes so these two membranes opposite side are kept apart so that there is a free passage of air in between the two right then the bronchioles the bronchioles i told you it is generally 1 mm or less than 1 mm in diameter but there is always a condition where the bronchioles can dilate it is called bronchiodilation 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 occurs during emergency condition when sympathetic nerves are stimulated when epinephrine or epinephrine or adrenaline nor adrenaline produced is produced from adrenal medulla or sympathetic nerves in emergency conditions you can see bronchi bronchioles they undergo dilation so that there is more passage of air but the, the bronchodilation can occur 1 to 5 mm based on the amount of epinephrine or adrenaline produced the dilation can be more than uh, 3 4 or up to 5 mm also facilitating more air to take inside more air taken will combine with I mean, that more oxygen will combine with more glucose to produce more energy so emergency condition but there is also bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction means the bronchioles which are 1 mm in diameter can also come closer so it might come a very close half a mm or 0.3 mm so it has come very close so that is when air pollutants are coming air pollutants are coming or when cold air is coming or when parasympathetic nerves are stimulated remember parasympathetic nerves will not bring say for example if the diameter is 1 mm it will not bring that to half a mm see after sympathetic nerves have stimulated bronchioles to dilate from 1 to 2 mm say 1 to 2 or 3 from 3 back to 1 parasympathetic nerves but the other things like pollutants like cold air certain irritants which are growing going inside into the respiratory tract the bronchioles might constrict further from the normal 1 mm to half a mm 0.3 mm so like that so that process is called as bronchoconstriction so the diameter of the bronchioles can increase or decrease it can increase or decrease but normal condition is 1 mm half a mm or less than that by the time we came to alveoli the diameter of alveolus is only 0.1 mm so it is 1/10th of a mm actually the respiratory bronchioles each respiratory bronchioles produce 2 to 11 alveolar ducts
each respiratory bronchiole, each respiratory bronchiole will produce 2 to 11 alveolar ducts. For convenience, I am drawing only two, but there can be more actually, 2 to 11. And each of the alveolar duct will produce a sac-like structure. So this is the alveolar duct. This is a respiratory bronchiole. Each respiratory bronchiole produces an alveolar duct. Your ducts can vary from 2 to 11. Each alveolar duct will produce an alveolar sac. It produces a sac-like structure. It's called alveolar sac. Now, if I take one sac and observe, this sac will again produce small, minute sac-like structures. Each alveolar sac will produce smaller sac-like structures called as alveoli. So normally there are two to six alveoli, or six to eight alveoli, six to eight alveoli. One alveolar sac will produce six to eight alveoli. So these alveoli are small sac-like structures and they are surrounded by simple squamous epithelium. And the number of alveoli, there are 700 million alveoli. Taking both the lungs, so it will be 700 million alveoli. Million is 10 lakhs. So 10 lakhs, if I remove one zero, it is equal to 70 crore alveoli. So having so many alveoli, the surface area is increased to 70 to 100 square meters square meter, you can imagine a square meter, all sides of the square is one meter, so you can calculate 70 to 100 square meters, how much is the surface area. So because of this, because of these divisions, you can see the increase in the surface area inside the lungs so many times. And if you come to the alveolus, the number of alveoli at the beginning, at birth, there are only 6 to 15 percent. 2 to 5 crore alveoli are only present at birth. Remember, before birth, lungs are not working. And only after birth, and it is filled mostly with the mucus, with the mucus fluid inside. And after birth, they have got very less alveoli inside, very less, 2 to 5 crores. But after birth, gradually the number keeps on increasing. And the number of alveoli increases to 70 crore over a period of time. And if you observe the cells, you will find two different types of cells. The cells inside alveolus. Alveolus, I told you, is 0.1 millimeter in diameter. And if I am observing the cells, the cells of alveoli present in the wall of alveolus are called as pneumocytes. They are called pneumocytes. We got type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes, 90 to 95 percent of the cells are type 1 pneumocytes. They are simple flat cells. They are simple flat cells through which exchange of gases occurs, oxygen, carbon dioxide is transferred through them, 90 to 95% or like that. Some 5 to 10%, they are not useful for exchange of gases, they are called type 2 pneumocytes. And that cells, the type 2 pneumocytes, they simply produce a surfactant. So we have already discussed what is the surfactant earlier. The clara cells produce surfactant. So and some of the cells inside the alveolus are also producing surfactant. And the bronchioles and alveoli, they, they are not having C-shaped rings, but they are surrounded by elastic fibers. They, they contain, the bronchioles contain smooth muscles inside. In the wall there are smooth muscles. And they are connected to the external wall of the lungs with the help of elastic fibers. And even in case of alveolus also, you can see elastic fibers, elastin fibers and collagenous fibers. 
you can see they are elastin fibers here both collagen and elastin fibers are present outside by which an alveolus is attached to the outer surface of the lung